What's up guys, how you all doing? Adam here and in this video I am bringing back Rockin' one of the classics and that is the What's In My Dock video. Now I've done a whole bunch of these in the past but I've not done one for quite some time but I've had so many requests recently to bring back this old classic that I am bringing it back today. Uh, I'll leave a playlist link down below that goes back to all of the historical versions of this so you can see uh, maybe what my dock looked like a few years ago as to what it does now. If that kind of thing interests you, go ahead. Uh, in in addition to that, I also did a video yesterday and that was entitled how my setup makes me money and my workflow detailed. And I'm thinking the people that are watching this video would probably be interested in that as well. And that's really how I utilize my setup that I've got here, the six screens, how I use all of them and how I make the most out of it in order to make myself more money, make my time more efficient. So if you wanna check that out, again, I will leave a link down in the uh, video description. If you're watching this on Facebook or something like that, then head over to the YouTube page of this video and you'll see the video description uh, uh, down below but without further ado let's get into the what's in my dock I'm not quite sure what version number this is anyway this is the typical size that I have uh, my dock set at and in fact before I go on this wallpaper here is one by Justin Mauler and it actually spreads the whole six screens and again I've done a video on how to make uh, the wallpaper spread across multiple screens and I'll leave a link to that as well down in the video description but enough pimping out my previous videos so this is the size I have my dock but for the purposes of this video I'm going to make it like this now when I go into like the Apple store or I see someone using a Mac and they've got their dock like this, it literally makes me flabbergasted. Uh, but each to their own, I like it as small as possible. Now, first up we've got the Finder. Now obviously the Finder is just a very, very basic uh, file management tool for those people who use Windows and have not used a Mac before. The Finder really is the equivalent to uh, Windows Explorer, for example. And in here, I can get access to pretty much everything that I want to. I've got all of my Dropbox stuff, which I use heavily. Um, I've also got access to my uh, Synology NAS, which I use heavily as well. I've got about 28 terabytes of stuff on there. And then I've also got my two uh, Cal Digit boxes as well. Now you can see here, I've got uh, one at the top there and one below and in fact we'll come back to those when we do the menu bar along the top but that's finder now quite often I find that finder is just not comprehensive enough for what I need and I've purchased a pathfinder uh, I've been using this for a long long time now and uh, it really is a great application for file management it's much 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 more complex you can even pull up terminals and do a whole bunch of stuff in here as well and in fact I've not registered this one yet but I have purchased it uh, I can promise you it is well well worth the money and uh, no one has paid me to say that now next up we've got launchpad I never ever touched that and in fact I wonder if I can uh, even get rid of that because that is just a complete waste of time uh, and then we've got Safari Safari is my main browser of choice not because I'm particularly a fan of Safari but the reason being is that it integrates with all of the other iOS devices so if you're browsing for example a page on your iOS device you can go straight to Safari pull that page up instantly and transfer it over to the computer and vice versa and between all of your devices uh, I'm not actually a huge fan of Safari because there's all kinds of funky issues with it for example when you're playing YouTube videos it finishes the advert and then you have to click pause for it to play the actual video which is very, very irritating indeed. So not a fan of Safari, but I really use it uh, because of all of the links that it has into all of the other applications uh, running, uh, sorry, all of the other de devices in the Apple ecosystem. Uh, Google Chrome, I use a lot of the time as well. And I love the fact now that they've added the double tap to zoom in. That was something that was really missing. And, and if it was a lot more integrated in the way that Safari is, I would definitely be a Google Chrome user. Um, but I do still shed the load between the two. And in fact, the way I utilize them is I have one set up for one of my YouTube channels, one set up for another YouTube channel. And that way I can just go straight to my videos, etc., without having to navigate uh, YouTube's horrible kind of user switch. 
Now, then we've got the calendar. We've also got notes, uh, photos, the new app from Apple as well in recent operating systems. Not a huge fan of the photos application. I've got to admit, I did prefer the previous version, but I don't know if that's just my age showing and I'm being old fashioned or if I did actually prefer it. Uh, all of my photos are in the cloud. I've got about 40,000 of them and I pay for a 500 gigabyte uh, subscription on iCloud to uh, deal with all of that kind of stuff. Messages, that's all of my SMS and iMessages as well as some of the Google stuff as well in there. Brilliant, brilliant application. I wish that iMessage was available on Windows and Android. That would just be absolutely fantastic. FaceTime, again, because of the integration into the iOS devices, you can not only do FaceTime on your computer and FaceTime audio phone calls, but you can also do cellular phone calls as well, which means that you can just dial out a normal cell number on any type of phone. It goes out via Bluetooth on your actual phone, and then you've got the audio coming through your computer, which is very, very handy for uh, efficient workflow. iTunes just gets worse and worse all the time. Absolutely horrendous application, but um, it does do what it is meant to do, just. Uh, the App Store, obviously this is the application store uh, that came to Mac a few years ago and it is fantastic. It really is just the absolute best way to get your applications. I must admit though, I do feel like the actual development of games and apps and all kinds of stuff has slowed uh, for the Mac since the advent of the App Store. First of all, there was loads and loads of new stuff coming out, but I think it just doesn't have the kind of audience that iOS has in the App Store, so it just doesn't get that kind of uh, input like the uh, ones do on the iOS devices. Next up, we've got system preferences, which is where you obviously set all of your system preferences. Now, uh, in here, I've got something called uh, Global SAN. Uh, and what this does is it actually gives me the ability to have uh, a iSCSI device connected uh, straight up to my Synology NAS, which can then present a LUN directly to my Mac itself. If you're thinking, what the hell is he talking about, then uh, go ahead and Google it. But it is a great, great, great little utility, and it's only about $80. Uh, the rest of the stuff in there is pretty standard for uh, Mac OS X. Next up, we have my email client, and that is uh, Microsoft Outlook. And it's unfortunate that I can't open up all these applications, and I do apologize for that. But obviously, the minute you go into things like notes and photos and Outlook and stuff like that, it's all kind of private, confidential information, so I can't really do it. But Outlook, um, recently a new version of the whole Office suite for Mac, which has been fantastic, really, really needed. And Microsoft have done an incredible job on that. And Office is still by far and away the best what shall I call it, uh, like uh, commercial productivity tool uh, that is out there on the market today. And Outlook, I absolutely love. You can see I don't even have the Apple Mail client in here. I just don't use it at all. I can't stand it. Next up, we have After Effects, Photoshop and Audition. And I use these all the time. Obviously, After Effects for uh, doing things like floating titles and uh, motion tracking and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and then we've got Photoshop, and then we've also got Audition as well, which I use for uh, audio quality fairly regularly. Uh, if you've got some kind of hiss or something like that going on in the back of your background of your audio, Audition will clean that up nicely and bring you out some really, really lovely crisp audio. And Photoshop, everyone knows that already. Uh, Final Cut Pro is my actual video editing tool of choice. I do have Premiere as well, and occasionally I kind of flick between the two if I want certain functionality, but I much prefer Final Cut to uh, Adobe Premiere. Adobe Premiere, definitely more comprehensive, but Final Cut Pro, just a lot quicker and easier to use. Next up, we also have uh, the ScreenFlow application, which I'm using now, obviously, to record this and record uh, all of my screen uh, recording type stuff. And it's a great app, really, really great app. I've bought every single version of it since version one, um, and, and you really can't complain about it at all. It, it does the job perfectly. Now, next up, we've got Twitter. I actually use the standard Twitter application. The main reason being is that it gives you notifications of things like who's followed you, um, retweets, all that kind of stuff in the notification um, timeline rather than having to actually have it set up notifications all the time, which I'm not a fan of. And, and that's really why I don't use uh, Tweetbot. Uh, next up, we've got Evernote, which I use very, very regularly indeed. Great application, really, really incredible. Uh, I'm hoping that in the next iteration of uh, OS 10, 
El Capitan, which I love the name of. Uh, the new Notes application is going to get a little bit closer to Evernote. So at some stage, I can not use Evernote anymore. But I have no problem paying for it whatsoever. Uh, Activity Monitor, I use all the time. Uh, next up, we've got FileZilla, which is an FTP client, uh, completely free of charge. And then we have an application called Remotix. Now, Remotix is a remote desktop application. So when you want to connect to uh, Windows desktops over uh, RDP, the remote desktop protocol, then this is a great application for doing it rather than the free one from Microsoft. The beautiful thing about the Remotix application is that it synchronizes all of your uh, RDP connections over iCloud. So you've got it on your iPhone, you've got it on your iPad, you've got it on your Mac. And whenever you add an, an RDP connection to any one of those, it synchronizes them uh, between all of them. Again, sorry, I can't open that up, guys, but it's got all of the IP addresses and domain names and stuff like that of various uh, desktops that I connect to. Uh, Skype, I've never really been a Skype fan. Um, I have to use it to talk to certain people, but I try to use it as little as possible, to be honest. Now, Telegram uh, is my messaging client of choice. I much, much, much prefer this to WhatsApp for this reason. It's completely multi-platform and it synchronizes as well. If you write on the Mac and you talk to someone, it's also there on your phone. If you use it on Android, it's also there on your iPhone. It's on your iPad. There's a client for absolutely everything. WhatsApp is unreliable, unstable. Uh, it you can't use it on your Mac, so you're constantly having to use your phone, even though you're sitting at a full-size keyboard. I literally hate it. The problem is everyone uses WhatsApp and not many people use Telegram. So if you're not using Telegram, please jump on board with my uh, Telegram revolution and, uh, and jump on board and grab and use that application. Now, next up, we have uh, something called GoToAssist Expert. Now, GoToAssist gives you the ability to bring up someone else's desktop without having to remote desktop to their machine. So for, it's a monthly subscription uh, from Citrix. And if I wanted to, if you had a problem with your computer, for example, and I wanted to see what was going on, I could very easily give you a link. You would type that link into your browser, run a piece of software, and immediately we're both connected and we're both looking at the same screen. Uh, it's also used via a server, so there's no worries of firewalls getting in the way or opening ports or anything like that. It, it just works and it's fantastic. Next up, again, another uh, product from Citrix, a cloud product, and that is GoToMeeting. Now, if you're aware of WebEx, for example, this gives you the ability to set up meetings so you can have face-to-face -face meetings over HD uh, quality uh, video using webcams. You've got full video conferencing functionality. You've also got the ability to share screens and do webinars and all this other kind of stuff as well. So a great product from Citrix. Now, uh, Reflector 2, in fact, I may be able to show this quickly. Let's see if it will uh, work. This gives you the ability to actually be able to share your screen of your iDevice, your iOS device, to your computer. So if I quickly just turn this on here, you can see now that this is my phone and on my phone here, I can just simply navigate around. You can change uh, orientation as well. You can minimize it, maximize it, and you can even record as well. So you can actually record uh, all of the screen flow uh, from your iDevice. And this is great when you're doing demonstrations over the internet, for example, using your iDevices uh, via something like GoToMeeting, a great, great little product there. Uh, and I pay for that one as well. Next up, we've got Zoom. And this is my uh, mix effects application for the TAC 8 device that I use for all of my audio. So you can see here, I've got full uh, graphical control uh, control, sorry, over the uh, TAC 8. And I'm going to be bringing you guys a full review of this on the uh, channel in the not too distant future. VLC is my video player of choice. I absolutely love it. Plays every different kind of format possible. Very, very fast. Doesn't hardly use any um, hardware resources at all. And it's free. You can't ask for more. Uh, ITV, and this is this little application here. I've got a TV card in my computer. I believe it's Elgato. And this enables me to watch Freeview channels here in the UK on my computer and record and all that kind of stuff as well. 
And then we've got IP Cam. Uh, now, IP Cam is not actually an application. It's something that I've used the Fluid application, which I'll show you in just a minute here, uh, to create an application. And the Fluid application can create a standalone application out of any web page that you want. So if you wanted to make a Facebook app, for example, then you could come in here and you could type Facebook. Uh, dot com give it a name of facebook sorry i'm typing over a microphone cable um here and you could go create and that will create its own application for that and you can keep it separate from all of your other browsers fluid app a great application and then the calculator which i use all of the time so next up you can see here i've got the full adobe cc suite which i pay for um i won't read all of these out but you guys can uh, pause the video and, and have a look through if you want to check out all of these different applications but yeah there's obviously a whole bunch of them in there including the office suite uh pixel mater uh, a few other bits and pieces as well now one thing i will show you is this now this is a new label printer that i've got it's called the uh, lights icon now you can also get an application for this on your i devices as well as android and it's a full label printer now if you're like me with your cables and you like to have everything perfectly organized this is great because you can literally print out a whole bunch of labels and then you can just stick them to all your cables and you can have everything perfectly organized uh, in here you've got uh, the ability to have all kinds of different shipping labels you can put graphics on uh, you can do all kinds of stuff you, you crack the print button and bang away you go and that will just print that out literally in about a second and uh, i'll try and show you that in this video anyway next up let's go over to the menu bar so first of all we've got the uh, reflector application up there we've got the pathfinder application which gives us the ability to do a whole bunch more stuff from the menu bar uh, roboform which i use for all of my uh, passwords and stuff like that stored in the cloud um, we've also got telegram dropbox uh, remotics skype and then we've got my uh, cow digit stuff here so these are my two cal digit applications of uh, boxes sorry uh, there are 16 terabytes in each one one of them i have uh, set up as a raid zero which i use like a kind of scratch disk and then the one in raid five i use as a backup device uh, and that's obviously got built in uh, redundancy should one of those drives foul but it gives me in total 16 plus 12 uh, terabytes of storage and when you add that to the nas that i've got as well it gives you a fair amount of storage uh, Twitter, we've also got Creative Cloud, uh, the Citrix Receiver application up here. We've got this little application here, which I forget the name of, um, and it shows you the incoming and outgoing traffic speeds, screen flow, and then I also have uh, iStats up here as well. So uh, full iStats in here, and this shows you everything that's going on at any one time. Uh, you can break down all the CPU usage. You can see uh, absolutely everything. Any information that you want is all up there uh, ready to utilize. Uh, I also uh, have the VPN icon up here as well. And I use C uh, CyberGhost for my VPN for doing things like torrents, etc, uh, etc. Et anyway, guys, that is it. I'm pretty sure we covered everything off in there. I've no idea how long this video has gone on for. If you have watched all the way through to the end, please do go ahead and hit that like button for me. It really does help me out. Um, and I will see you guys all in the next one. Peace.